Hello everyone, Maxim here, and today I will show you cities in the plains of Eidolon. This is the first open world added to the game. The faction we are facing here are Green Ears and Sentience. In this material I will show you what kind of vendors you can meet on Cetus and what each of them does. I will also give you some useful tips on how to complete the bounties efficiently, as well as show you how to farm Cetus Wisps. Warning: This material contains spoilers from the second Dream Story quest. If this quest is still ahead of you, you are watching on your own risk. You can reach Cetus by completing missions leading to this location. Once you get there, you will be able to talk with the local vendors. However, before you can buy anything from them, you must first complete Saya's Vigil story quest. You can start it with a special dialogue option after completing one bounty from Kanzu. He is the guy near the gate. Bounties are special missions on the planes from which you can get various resources, mods, relics, parts for weapons or warframes, and the most important at the beginning, Ostron standing points. This is how you have to start this syndicate. Over the time, you will have other possibilities to get standing points as you level up this syndicate. But let's back to the vendors and take a look what they have to offer. Let's start with the Fisher Highlock. She can sell items required for fishing, but also process or buy caught fish. Four points you can buy from her various fishing spears, baits and trophies blueprints. The special of the day is always an offer for platinum from a given vendor. Useful only if you are in urgent need. All fish are relatively easy to catch. We'll get to that in the next video. Providing fish gives you standing points and cutting gives you fish components. Let's move on to the old man Sumbat. He's a miner. Here you can buy cutters to cut ores and minerals from the stones as well as blueprints to be able to turn them into useful resources. You can also exchange gems for standing points. Near that spot you will meet Nakak. Here you can buy a few cosmetic and decorative items and flares that increase shared affinity range. One of the masks she's selling is related to the story quest about Revenant. You will also visit Nakak during the Plague Star event. Next vendor is Master Tizenai. He is saving the wild species from the plains. You will find here Echolures, Pheromones, a cure for Vasca virus, as well as cosmetic items and decorations. Catching animals for him will provide you animal tags that you can exchange for very cute fluffs. The last vendor here is Hook. You can buy swords components and forge your own from selected parts. I will describe this topic in another material, as it is quite extensive. If it is already on the channel, a link to it is in the upper right corner right now. Walking towards the gate, you will meet Kanzu. Remember that when selecting a bounty, you can right click on each to see exactly what individual rewards looks like. However, I just said that Hook is the last vendor here, in the main courtyard. There is another person on Cetus who provides some services. You will get to know him after completing the Saya's Vigil story quest. If you haven't completed it yet, there will be a spoiler right now. To find that person, you have to pass Kanzu, turn right, go more or less straight ahead. You come across a gate that doesn't open. To get through it, you have to press 5 to get into the operator form. You will see a cave, and Onko will be waiting inside, a representative of the second syndicate on Cetus, the Quills. Onko gives you the opportunity to assemble your own amp, the operator's special weapon. This topic also deserves a separate material as well as the operators themselves, just like the Eidolons, which cores you will need here to exchange them for standing points. Thanks to this, you will be able to buy components for another amps, arcanes or cosmetic items. We will return to Onko some other time, now let's move on to activities on the plains of Eidolon. Apart from the fact that you can freely move around and explore, Random missions will occasionally appear on the free roam mode, with various smaller rewards. While traveling through the plains during the day, you can come across thumpers. These are green ears machines that hide various resources, materials, ores and fish components. To get to these drops, you need to destroy the covers on the mob's knees and then shoot the exposed green elements. Destroying the fourth weak point will kill the miniboss. At night, however, you can meet something much bigger, Eidolons. 
the gigantic monster that will wander around and attack everything it encounters. Fighting them is one of the more complex fights in the game and definitely requires the separate material. Let's focus on the easier things first. I mentioned earlier about the missions here on the plains. Mainly through bounties, you can come across the local counterparts of extermination or defense, breaking into armored vault. Other tasks include dominating the area for a certain time and saving or luring out the target. From the more unique ones, I can mention the Fallen Drone Escort. Here you can use Loki's Teleport or Nova's Portal, which can speed up the mission. You will also be looking for supply caches from time to time. They are usually located on the edges of the marked area. If, on the other hand, you have to destroy the green supplies, do not kill enemies flying on the ships. Only mobs moving on the foot can drop the signal item for the next airdrop. Wait till they jump off the ships. Bounties can also be started in the tents that are placed on the plains in various places. While visiting the plains, you will come across a variety of resources, such as Gragdroll, Nisilpat, Iradite or Maprico, but also the Cetus Wisps. They are stone creatures of unknown origin that float in the air near the water reservoirs. You can meet them twice as often at night. Searching for them generally involves exploring the shoreline of the main lake and all smaller ponds. But if you prefer, here's a map with the exact spots of their possible occurrence. If you want to farm them, fly with Arcwing or go on foot to or all selected points on the map and then reset the map by returning to the gate for a moment. It's best to do this at night. Wisps are affected by the resource booster and the charm. They are also marked as a resource on the minimap, so loot detection will help to find them. Each open world offers three types of activities in addition to bounties and bosses, mining, fishing and conservation of the animals. These activities and methods of farming standing to the Ostron Syndicate will be described in next video. And this is about it in this one. Have fun playing the planes! If you have any questions, please type them in the comments or visit one of my streams. Link in the description. See you next time. Bye.